Hello and welcome to another edition of the PickupTest.com and Electric String Player. And today is the day a lot of you guys out there have been waiting for. That's right, it's our review of the new LR Bags Voice Print DI. It's finally here and now we're going to check it out. So there's been a lot of buzz about this box for quite some time, especially because they started showing prototypes at NAMM over a year ago now but only started to ship the box this past November. And because almost everyone has the same questions about this unit, I wanna save those of you that are busy or have short attention spans a lot of time and give you the answers right at the top of this review. So, does the voice print sound good? Sometimes. Well, uh, it, okay, it, is it gonna make my violin pickup sound better than say a preamp could? Yes, probably. How about my cello? Maybe, maybe not. Well, is it better than the Tone Dexter? Sometimes. Will it make my pickup sound just like a world-class vintage microphone? Absolutely not. Well, should I buy it? It depends. <sighs> now, for the rest of you guys who've been with us for a while, you know that a big part of what we do here at the Pickup Test and Electric String Player is help you ask better questions. And when it comes to this relatively new type of tech, these IR-based preamps, a better question is, is this box going to help me achieve a more realistic, yet still usable sound on stage with the instrument, playing style, and pickup system I'm currently using? And will it integrate well with my current rig and needs as a performer? And last but not least, is a piece of kit like this something that's gonna be relatively easy and comfortable for me to use on stage so that I'll actually feel good taking the time to master it and use it to its fullest potential? Well, we're gonna set out to try to answer all of those questions in this review. But first I want to explain why doing an honest and accurate review that really answers those questions for as many of you as possible um, is so difficult with a unit like this. And a lot of it comes down to how much variability we're dealing with here. You see, all of you guys watching this video, whether you're a violinist, violist, or cellist, play a unique instrument with a unique voice and character. And of course, that gets transferred through the different pickup systems that all of us play, which are all mounted on different parts of the instrument and work in very different ways. And then there's a matter of finding a training protocol that gives us the sound that we're looking for. More on that a little later. And because these IR-based preamps live in the hardware and the software world, these units are constantly changing and in most cases getting better, receiving updates with improved training protocols and even improving their feature set as they go. And that's gonna especially be the case with the voice print because of the tight integration with the Bluetooth app, which is a first for these types of units. So as you can hear, there are a lot of moving targets. But don't worry, we've done reviews like this before. So here's how we're gonna break down this video. And if you wanna skip around, you can check out the timestamps below. We're gonna start with our standard unboxing and tabletop review, where we'll break down the build quality, the ease of use with not only the box itself, but with the Voice Live app, and give you our honest opinion of the hardware and layout. Then we're gonna take you through a typical training session with the unit. Now, Bags has not created a protocol yet for training bowed string instruments. At present, it only ships with a protocol for steel string guitar. So that created some other issues for us. But what we attempted to do was train the box in a bunch of different ways to try to control some of the different variables that you guys might run into if you were to purchase this unit for yourself. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about who this unit is actually for. Then we're gonna address the elephant in the room and give you our honest opinion as to how this unit stacks up with the two current IR preamps on the market, the Tone Dexter and the V-Sound 2. And finally, we're gonna be talking about the future of the voice print. 
revealing some of the cool new features that LR Bags is going to be unlocking in this box moving forward. So unboxing the unit, we have a nice quick start manual. The unit itself and an included power supply, which is always appreciated. With its metal housing and beautiful bright screen, the bags feels like a unit that's built for the road. Even though it's small, it has a nice amount of weight to it. And while the knobs are plastic, they have a lot of give to them. And the rotary encoders beneath the screen having a really pleasant clicking sound. These things are strangely satisfying to use. My only gripes with build quality was that the power supply seemed to be a little bit finicky, which may have just been my unit. And the actual switches feel pretty cheap and are extremely clicky, which is always annoying in a product made for acoustic musicians. This is actually an annoying feature that the bags shares with the V-Sound 2. And I have no idea why a company like LR Bags, who makes acoustic products, wouldn't get this and throw in some kind of a soft switch. And these don't even feel as good as other bags products like the ubiquitous Venue DI that we see on a lot of acoustic players' boards for the past few years. And the only thing about the bags that I wouldn't completely count on on the road are the durability of these switches. As far as ins and outs, we pretty much have the same features that one would come to expect from any preamp DI stomp box, whether IR based or not. We have quarter inch input and output, and we have the power point here. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of keeping it so close uh, to the input jack. Uh, watch out if you're using any kind of angled quarter inch cable. And we have our amp output on the side. Flipping over the unit, we have a DI, an effects loop, a ground lift switch, and we have a USB micro connection for firmware updates. Although it would be nice if you could just get all of that through the app. And if we're getting really gripey, I'd love to see a more durable, more future-proof, more robust USB-C connection. I mean, it's 2021. A small gripe is that the unit could have been even more pedal board friendly if all of the jacks would have been top mounted. But this is a very small compact unit, wider but shorter than the V-Sound and considerably smaller than the Tone Dexter and most of its competitors in the preamp DI stomp box space. So it'll definitely fit on the tiniest of pedal boards for those of you that don't want to use it as a standalone unit. As far as the feature sets, we have an anti-feedback control, a voice control, which is a blend knob for how much of the IR signal you want to blend with your acoustic tone. That's a critical feature to have on the box for these types of units. And a select knob to choose which voice print you want. And this unit can save up to a thousand voice prints, which is bonkers compared to its competition. Even though I'm not sure I would ever use more than two or three for a given cello, I do have a couple of different instruments. And for those of you who double on mandolin, guitar, fiddle, banjo, this could be a game changer for you to have those many presets available. Of course, we have our volume knob. Oh, that feels so good. A mute button with a red LED above it. This LED also comes on when the unit is in bypass mode, which somewhat annoyingly can only be activated from the phone app as of right now and a next switch to scroll to the next preset, which I'm also not a huge fan of. This seems to be another feature this has in common with the V-Sound 2 that I criticized pretty strongly when we reviewed that unit. And I'll put that review up here for those of you that want to check that out. This just seems like a massive waste of a foot switch. I've yet to meet a string player or even a guitarist who's switching between IRs on their instrument mid-song. It just doesn't make any sense, especially when with only two switches, you're leaving out so many more practical and useful features, like say, a boost switch. 
To make things even more strange, the bags already has a dedicated knob for changing voice prints, as well as the ability to do it on the app, which makes adding a redundant foot switch on the box with the exact same functionality even more of a head scratcher here. Even a bypass switch would be more useful for some styles of playing. As a cellist, having the ability to bypass the IR when I was going from bow to pizzicato was actually a pretty useful feature that I employed with the Tone Dexter all the time. That's all I'll say about that for now, but I just don't get it. Maybe the bags guys could work on a firmware software update a little bit later to give the player some options as far as the pedal functionality. This is something James May and the Tone Dexter guys did last year when an update allowed you to scroll through presets with your feet on the fly while retaining the boost and mute tune features. And while we're at it, while we're talking about wish lists here, how about adding a tuner when that boost is engaged? That'd be kind of nice. Now let's talk for a minute about ease of use. And this is where the bags really shines. When Bags was working on developing this unit, they were well aware of their competitors, and their goal was to create something that was incredibly easy to use. And when you're shooting for the acoustic market, whether it's guitarists or certainly bowed string players, that's a very wise idea. And Bags certainly hit that ball out of the park on this one. The only time I needed the manual was to figure out which button I needed to push for Bluetooth pairing on the unit. And pairing the unit with the app is as simple as connecting a Bluetooth speaker or any other piece of hardware you have. And we're going to take you through the training process in just a minute. But suffice it to say that the user experience with the app was second to none. The app also opens up some really cool features that give this unit a distinct advantage over some of its competitors, but more about that later. As we mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of the biggest problems in testing any of these IR-based preamps like the tone print is all of the variability involved. You know, LR Bags made an interesting choice in creating a system that utilizes the microphone on your iPhone. And even though the exact microphone on different iPhone models varies a little bit, it's definitely within a pretty specific tolerance, which is really different from a unit like the Tone Dexter where you're bringing your own mic to the party. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But we still have the variables of different instruments, different pickups, and also different training methods. You see, as of right now, the app only has a training protocol for steel string guitar. And the good folks at LR Bags, while not sponsoring this video, did ask us to help work with them and give them our feedback on what we thought the best training protocols might be. It's kind of a work in progress. And in that way, you can almost think of this video as a beta test. So we thought this would be a great chance for you to hear the different tonal possibilities available through the voice print. And for those of you who are thinking of purchasing one, to see what factors made a big difference in training the box. We set up our little iPhone-based mic rig on a tripod and started at 8 inches away. And for our first test, we tried to follow the guitar-based training protocol as closely as we could. We attempted to slap the bridge in the same way that the video shows the guitarist slapping the saddle of the instrument. Now, on a bowed string instrument, violin or cello, this is not going to create as much resonance, but there is a way of creating IRs using a small impulse hammer tapping the bridge that was one of the first methods ever used and is still a popular way to create measurements of fine bowed string instruments. This would usually be done in an anechoic chamber, though, which we obviously didn't have. For step two and three, we followed the protocol of playing chords and then broken up arpeggiated chords. Of course, we used the bow here instead of plucking, as any IRs we've ever created using pits, whether it be with the tone dexter or in a DAW, really don't wind up being suitable for bowed sound. 
And for step four, playing a scale up and down the neck of the instrument, once again, bowed. First, we're just going to create a new voice print. And for step one, it's telling us to just uh, do some tapping. So we're gonna try that now. And now it's telling us that it's done. So we're going to go to step two, some chords and Okay, now it's telling us for step three uh, to do some slowly picking individual strings. So let's give that a try. And then for step four, it's saying play scales up and down the neck. Let's give that a try. And we can go and audition the voice print and, or go on and save it. Save, save, save. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And then we had Megan play a short excerpt going directly from the bags into our Audient Evo converters and right into Logic with no other processing added. Check it out and leave a comment below about which one you thought sounded the best. So the first variable we wanted to test for was microphone distance. So we repeated the exact same test, moving the microphone back from eight inches to 12 inches, just to add a bit more air to the sound and see how the algorithm reacted. Thank you. 
The next variable we wanted to test for was miking position. So we tried miking the violin from above, which you'll see studio engineers doing all the time. Again, from eight inches away. For our next variable, we wanted to see what would happen if we completely mixed it up with the training protocol. So instead of tapping for step one on the bridge with our finger, we tried chops. And instead of rolled quadruple stops, we went with moving double stops up and down the instrument. And we even threw in a different scale just for fun. The other really important variable is how this bags performs with other pickups. And because we are the pickup test, you know we did that too. And our members, which should include literally everybody watching this video, can check out all of the sound files and nerd out to your heart's content at thepickuptest.com. We should be posting those in another week or two. Next, for the cello, we did a similar range of experiments, except instead of trying to mic the instrument from above, we tried miking positions of left sound hole, right sound hole, and centered. And then we tried our centered test at two different distances, again, eight and 12 inches. Check it out. Like Megan, I'm going directly from my Eric Aceto bridge pickup and right into Logic via the Audion Evo sound card. No other processing or effects were added. Now that we've unboxed, dissected, and gotten to know a little bit about how the voice print sounds, 
Let's address that elephant in the room, shall we? What about the Tone Dexter and the V Sound 2? Is this unit better? Is it the one you should buy? Has it dethroned those boxes as the one to get? When I talked to the guys at Bags, they admitted being very aware of the Tone Dexter in particular when they were designing their product. And I don't think it's any surprise that the voice print comes in at the exact same price tag as their current competitors. I want to preface this by reminding you that, as we said in the beginning of the video, this is really a moving target here. The Tone Dexter, the V Sound, and the Tone Print are constantly receiving updates, both to the hardware and in the case of the V Sound and the Voice Print, the software as well. So things can change and probably almost definitely will change over time. So if I were in the market for one of these boxes, would I choose the voice print? For me, a lot of this comes down to the ease of use and the actual hardware feature set. You see, at the pickup test in Electric String Player, we don't like saying a unit is good or bad, better than or worse than. It's really about what type of player is it for. So first off, if you're a little bit intimidated by technology and really need a piece of gear to be easy to use for you to want to work with it at all, I think this is where the voice print really shines above the other two competitors. The app is absolutely fantastic and actually really fun to use. Plus, everyone has a smartphone these days, so not having to deal with a mic and different leveling and compatibility options there compared to a Tone Dexter is really, really good. The software, including the EQ, is way more user-friendly than the V Sound. And the app made it possible to actually have a visual multi-band EQ, just like you would in Pro Tools or Logic, which was awesome. Even for a power user like myself that has a lot of experience with all three of these units and is fairly technical and maybe not so intimidated by this technology anymore, even just having the luxury of being able to save a preset with an actual name that I'm able to type up quickly on the phone and even a note about when it was created or what instrument I created it for is awesome. When you use the Tone Dexter or the V Sound, you're just looking at a number on a screen. And storing presets with the Tone Dexter can be a real pain in the ass. And even though you can name your presets with Tone Dexter and V Sound, you have to plug them into the computer or with the Tone Dexter use a clunky process with the SD card. And then once you load those presets back in, you have to convert them to numbers again so the boxes will read them. That whole process really feels like old tech compared to this. But if we're talking about feature set, I can't necessarily say the voice print was a clear winner in this category. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I think the voice print shares a lot of the things with the V sound that I wasn't a huge fan of, like the fact that there isn't a boost switch and the lack of a tuner. And the fact that me and most of the musicians I know wouldn't really feel comfortable performing on stage with this unit by itself without a volume and a tuner pedal negates some of the awesomeness of its diminutive size and adds to the potential price tag of adding those other units if you're trying to build a basic acoustic performance rig from scratch. Whereas with the Tone Dexter, those things are very thoughtfully built into the unit. The Tone Dexter is really the only unit of these three that I would consider to be a standalone performance tool that I would feel very comfortable performing with all by itself. Now, if you're integrating this or a V sound into an existing rig where you already have those things and maybe a reverb pedal or maybe a whole bunch of multi effects and this is just there to be the core of your boat acoustic tone, well then this guy definitely has, like the V sound, a very, very small and attractive footprint. So for players who want an all-in-one unit, I think the Tone Dexter still has a pretty clear edge here with its feature set. But for other types of rigs and needs, this might be an excellent choice. In terms of roadworthiness, I have almost no concerns outside of the two switches with 
the Bags voice print. I imagine this will hold up extremely well. And Bags is the oldest out of these three companies and really has an established reputation for building solid gear. That said, the Tone Dexter absolutely holds its own with the bags in terms of its all metal quality, the great feeling rubberized knobs, and I definitely prefer the switches there. So in this category, I'd have to say it's a tie at best with maybe the tiniest edge going to the Tone Dexter. Megan, Paul, and myself didn't really notice any issues with latency in any of these three units. And last but not least, in terms of sound quality, well, you guys can let me know what you think. And of course, at the pickup test, we're all about letting you hear this gear for yourself instead of listening to random people on forums or even us. But for my money, the voice print definitely held its own, particularly with the violin. I was very impressed from 8 inches and also surprised that we were able to get fairly consistent results to my ear no matter what training protocol we used. Does it sound like a world-class mic on a violin? No. But like the V-Sound 2 or the Tone Dexter, it will get you a hell of a lot closer than any traditional preamp DI could. To completely overgeneralize this, I would say that overall the bags is more consistent in its measurements and the results it produces. While the Tone Dexter may give you better results at the high end, but you're usually going to have to futz around to get there. But both of these companies are continually ramping up and making their training process better and better and better. Now when it comes to the cello, I have some mixed feelings here. Um, did we get usable results? To my ear, yes. And that's really saying something considering the fact that I couldn't hear anything for my taste that was usable at all with the V sound, no matter which electric or acoustic cello I tried with it. And with the Tone Dexter, I've gotten results that ranged from good to awful depending on what pickup I was using, what microphone I was training with, and in some cases it just felt like dumb luck. And initially I was okay with that. After all, this process of training is sort of a, like dating. You just need to find that one perfect chemistry and then you keep using that preset every time. But to me, in some ways, the voice print reveals some of the inherent limitations in trying to use IRs with bowed strings, particularly for nerdy reasons of physics that we won't get into here with the lower pitch string instruments like cellos or bass. And while the voice print did achieve more consistent results than the Tone Dexter with my cellos, I can still hear some of the negative qualities that I just don't like about my pickup or really any cello pickup. Like that weird synth-like quality you get on the G-string. Or the weird pressurized attack you get when you change bows. And most of these IRs do add a little bit of artifact. A strange high pitch ringing that wouldn't naturally be found in your acoustic sound. And a kind of boxiness that, while an improvement again on my pickup, doesn't quite get me to the mic sound that I dream of being able to get from a pickup. Now you might disagree, and again, keep in mind that if when you're using this live with a band in a mix, if you slap some reverb on it, yeah, you can get something, again, way better than cellists have traditionally been able to get from any type of pickup system. And that is a huge advance. That is worth the price of admission. I guess what I'm saying is that in the end, IRs are something we should celebrate and they've gotten us a long way. They are the next step. But for those of you that dream of a pickup sound that's just like your cello, I have a feeling that that's gonna require a new kind of technology that just isn't out there quite yet. The guys at LR Bags also mentioned some exciting new features that they've been kicking around, including adding a new power interface for users where you can adjust the pre-gain EQ, which would create some really cool tone shaping possibilities, as well as the ability to plug in your own external microphone, although that would require some finagling with a phone-specific audio interface. 
And Lloyd Bags is also thinking about developing pickup systems around this new technology, which could potentially make it even more consistent in delivering a quality result. That's just my two cents, you guys. Feel free to comment below. What did you think of the sound of the bags on the cello and or the violin? And are you gonna go out and get one? And if you've gotten to this point in this video, you're one of the few string players out there that can really appreciate what we're doing here at Electric String Player and thepickuptest.com. And you know that this is the type of content that you just can't find anywhere else. Unlike the guitar, electric bass, or synth world, there are just so few string players out there so far that can really understand what we're doing here. And so it's incredibly meaningful for you to spread the word. So please hit like and subscribe, and I want to encourage you to go to the pickup test and become a member of our community. One time fee of 15 bucks helps to support our work and helps make videos like this possible. And we'll see you next time.